now i will invite uh, padmasri dr k k mehta sir my guru who is going to speak to us now at 82 huh? he is 82 and uh, still he is operating the governors chief ministers ministers uh, uh, and so many okay and uh, also doing the live demonstration at 82 Which without a Which single fever? tremor single tremor no tremor at all and uh, he can do the live demonstration just now he did it in the bombay ophthalmic association in the conference and with viral fever that yes on that day huge... he was running up and down with viral fever still he operated and the kk mehta is going to speak to us on the uh, subluxated uh, for him no lens is subluxated but he is going to speak to us in the subluxated lenses let us get the straight so by his hand he can do anything straight kk mehta sir ye mera name here uh thank you thank you very much dr lane so sweet of you uh i'm going to talk to you today on subluxated iol how to set them straight subluxated iols are always a big headache let me how do we handle them how should we really manage with them there are as one would say there are various ways in which you can fixate a displaced iol and a bag the easiest way of course is simply to suture the bag to the sclera let me show you how it works this method is something which anybody can do it works easily it's a smooth method of handling it and uh, really it makes life very simple now here is a nice beautiful subluxated cataract you get up in the morning and look at it and it makes your heart feel happy that you are an ophthalmic surgeon ya aaj maza aayegi now what you need to do as far as this is concerned is very simple the whole idea is you are going to move that bag with the lens back into its place interesting thing about now this case is of course is a marfan's which is a subluxated lens you never normally don't get these huge subluxations for any other reason you need to do a rexus in this sort of cases the rexus the only thing which you can do essentially is a rexus utilizing a needle because you have to do a small one at the same time you have to be careful that you don't tear the zonula bag at all because the bag has minimum supports you do a small little area you don't need to do need to do a big rexus at all because usually these lenses are very soft and you can aspirate them out comfortably easily you just have to be careful to make sure it doesn't run up to the edge so try and rotate around the capsular bag in a in a spiral manner so you do what we call as a spiral capsulotomy not a round capsulotomy first do a little one then you spiral it around until you get to the size where you want it to go having done that the next thing of course is hydro dissection but in a hydro dissection here before you do that the most important thing which you need to do is to fixate the bag because what you don't want is when you hydro dissect the bag swells up there is pressure on the zonules and that is usually the time when you tend to drop your lens so you take your bag and you support it utilizing hooks there are an option of using capsular hooks i am not very fond of them they are long they tend to hook below and they tend to cause and the edges of the rexus where you have made you tend they tend to evert a little so i like using these regular capsular hooks this is a little hydro dissection it came out now of course do you do a phaco emulsification with a minimum amount what we what we call a slow motion phaco that means you have a minimum amount of fluid going in and at the same time you have the phaco emulsification which is applied is comparatively low so it settles down and works out smoothly and easily without too much difficulty and that clears out the central area which you wanted to a little bit of polish in the edges to remove whatever is the cortical amounts which are left over easy way to remove this is to put your uh, uh, put your ia unit there and just to juggle it around the next step is to use a bag support so we use this little device where you can feed your lens where feed your loop in and then just use a capsular ring and put it in 
Remember to use the capsular ring so that it goes to the point where support is minimum. So it presses against it and supports it. And then finally take the last end and sl uh, slip it in. If it goes in perfectly, your bag will not be visible to you. Then you know it has gone in well. Now the next step, I want you to be with me for a minute because this is something a little interesting. This is your lens. You take a suture needle, pass it through the opening of the of the duct which you got it and then take it and suture it to the end. Pull it out from the tip. So you have sutured one leg onto, as you can see, one leg has been sutured on and the needle has been pulled out through the from the front. So you now got a leg sutured lying inside your bag, inside your inserter. You can use any lens, it doesn't really matter which lens you use because the procedure will work equally well. That is where the suture part goes. Make sure the leg goes out first, flip the other leg out, hold it in place and now take your needle which you have now pulled out from front. So the needle has come out from front, the thread is tied to the end of the, of the, of the, of the lens which is there, you put your inserter in. Now you take your needle, simply go under the edge of the bag which you have lifted up and go out into the sclera and pull it out. Once you pulled out the needle, the next step is you inject your lens inside from behind. At the same time maintaining a little traction onto the suture in front. So in essence what you have is a suture tied to a loop which has gone below the bag and which you are injecting inside. That's why I call it as a bag to the wall. Now your lens has gone inside. It is settled into place. You flip it into and put it into the, put it into the uh, capsular bag. Now this is your needle. Now all you have to do is suture it, suture your needle onto the needle which you have come out, suture it onto the sclera. Now you have two options. You can suture it or you don't want to feel lazy that day on suturing it. You have two or three passes through the sclera, it works equally well. At this stage, remove your bag support because now you want to pull the bag on and you want to see how the bag is being pulled. Make sure it lies in below and now gradually as you pull the suture, you will find that the the lens will come and hold up and support it. So in essence, the, now the lens loops itself are supporting the bag. And as you go on putting traction on the suture, the lens will supply it, will settle itself in. Take a single bite through and then after that, you have an option either of putting a suture and letting the edges, turning the edges in so they are no longer, will poke out and come forwards. And that is it. So this is a very simple, straightforward method which you can be done anytime. All you have to do, as I said, is suture one of the legs on and then pass it through the sclera. Center your lens, move the posterior part. The posterior part is not sutured, the part towards is not sutured. So that is how it works simply. And this is an easy way to execute this thing. And if the bag and the IOL are both displaced, now comes the interesting part, now what to do? So you remove them and you refix the IOL using proline with a modified what, Kawabara technique. Kawabara was a person who originally started with this technique, it's not my technique. I have only modified it, so which I will show you as it is. That's why I call it the Yamane modification of the subluxated bag IOL. Yamane was the one who used, used this technique of using the openings at the side. Now here you have a bag lens which is moving. As you can notice the bag and lens, everything is moving. With this you can't suture it. You try suturing it, suture at one end, the other end is going to come out. So the only option right here is really that you need to remove it. You open up a little conjunctiva, lift it, open it up a little 
Why do you lift the container? Well, because one of these days you're going to suture it, number one. Number two, you're going to have a lot of fluid going and you don't want container of ballooning. Easiest ways of preventing a container of ballooning is to make a little snip in the container. Makes life easy. Even when you're doing FACO, if you make a little snip at the, at the base of the FACO, you will never tend to get it. Set your measurement to 3 millimeters, 2.5 millimeters, 3 millimeters at the side in a cross manner. See exactly how I'm doing it. Cross manner. Now, the needle will go through the proximity. You put in a little AC maintainer. All these cases, a maintainer is the best idea to handle. Once you've done that, use the needle going through the first point, turn the needle around, and then put it back into the needle. So these are the needle, needle, needle openings which are made. They are like little tunnels, as one would call it. Now you take out that bag complex which is there. At this point, remove the bag finally which comes out. So the lens came out first, bag came out afterwards. Now you cut off the irrigation, which are, enables it to go back comfortably inside. Insert an air bubble, which tells you that everything is fine. There's no vitreous running there. And close your, put a single cross stitch suture. That is a safety suture, which you need to put. Always put in a safety suture. I mean, you can get away without it, but uh, never take chances. Life is much easier and you live longer. Now you take, uh, just two minutes more. Then you take a proline suture needle and you insert the needle to insert the suture into a 27 gauge needle. Why do you do that? Because we are now going to pull out these tractions and you push your needle in from that opening which you have made, that cross opening. So it is basically, you have made a side opening, so you put it first straight and then horizontally. And you just pull out the suture. The same way you do it with the other end. That makes it very simple to do. And now you hold the proline sutures and pull them out. So you got two proline sutures you pulled out. No gymnastics. You haven't shoved instruments inside the eye. You only pushed a needle which you held out. Now you take a rubber bung. And use a needle and go through it. At the base of the haptic loop junction. Any lens can be utilized. Excepting of course a plate haptic. Even that can be but that tends to spiral which you don't like. Once you push it through, now you use the same suture which you have pulled out. You push it through those needles which you have put through that lens. So you have taken a lens, punched a hole in it. Those sutures which you got out, you put in through that. And you now draw it out again. Once you draw it out, you move the lens forward onto it. So the lens is suspended on those two strands of needles which are there. Take them out. The next thing is you flange it. Flanging means you use a cautery and make a little button at the end. This is a low temperature cautery which is available. In case you want to know where it's available from, it's very simple. You get it on Amazon. And you pull the flanges until it locks into place. Pull it to be, make sure it does not. And then you insert your, put your lens inside. No hassles, no difficulties. Please note, there have been no gymnastics. You just peacefully put your lens inside. Just drop it in. Pull your proline sutures on both sides to stabilize your lens. And like you did the flanging on the lens, you now flange the edges. One of the easiest ways of flanging the lenses, first you put it in and then close up your things. Usually a single or a double cross stitch is more than enough to close it. And having done that, now you take the edges of your sutures and bury them. And now you flange those little pieces left over. Hold it and flange it in. You can notice the flanging going on. And that is it. Take your conjunct oven now and put it on top and bend it in a little. You do a little vitrectomy anterior. Use a little. And at the same time, after doing vitrectomy, you inject in a little steroid to make sure that there's no vitreal strands there. And that is it. And then you pull the content over and use a thermal coagulation cautery over it. So your knob is buried inside. 
you don't need to bury the knob, but the knob is blue color and we don't like watching it. So this is a very simple way in which you can handle these cases. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. K.K. Mehta, sir.